aside Sometimes you giggle about the folks in the middle And the ones that got a lot But when the smoke dissipates and the bills are late It's time to think about Handshake smiles and lipstick spittle in the wind Hi, in this screencast I'm going to demonstrate uh, a couple ways of creating speech bubbles that you might use for comics or um, um, photoshopping pictures, things like that. So uh, it's going to be a pretty short screencast, hopefully, um, a lot shorter than my typical ones. So here we go. Uh, first of all, um, I'll, I'll show you an example of you know, what we're trying to achieve. Bring this in here. See if anybody's looked at our blog, you'll know this is uh, Heathen X's avatar. So here's one type, just a nice oval speech bubble. Uh, next, you might do a square one like this, or a rectangular one. And thirdly, uh, maybe a thought bubble like this. All right, so that uh, out of the way. Uh, first of all, um, uh, if you're going to do speech bubbles, obviously you're worried about text as well, so one thing you might do is uh, try to find some good fonts. Uh, one place um, I recommend looking is a site called blambot.com. There we go. If you just hit uh, blambot.com, uh, you get to this page, the front page, you click on fonts here up at the top. And then they have a wide variety of fonts. Some of them are free, some of them are um, are pay fonts. So um, if you pick, if you're just trying to f fiddle around with stuff, you want to try out some free fonts, uh, you can look at the ones without the red dots on them, and those are free. So they've got dialog fonts, design fonts here. If you scroll down the page, effect fonts, symbol fonts, things like that. So there's a pretty good choice there. There's lots of other places uh, that you could probably find decent fonts as well. And we'll get started here. So first of all, uh, maybe we'll look at doing um, uh, a nice oval type of speech bubble. Now the way I do it is very quick. I just uh, pick the um, ellipse tool and I draw out the shape that I want. We'll bring up the fill and stroke dialog box and uh, we'll change the fill to white, and we'll change the stroke, turn it on, change it to black. We'll probably make it a little narrower. Let me try two or even one with this size. Okay. So there's our oval. Now it's actually very quick uh, what I'm going to do, and it's the same for, for each type of bubble really. Um, we'll get this out of the way, make some room here. First thing we want to do is uh, turn this into a path. Right now it's an ellipse. So we can do um, path, sorry, object. Oh shoot, see, I don't use the, uh, there we go, object to path, shift control C. Uh, I usually use the keys to do it. But um, so now if we double click this, we'll see there's nodes on here. Now, wherever you want the, uh, uh, the little uh, leader coming out of, of that bubble, We'll just double click to create three new nodes here. So say we want the, the point coming out on this side. So what I'm going to do is um, just create, double click here, maybe double click here, double click in the middle. So we have three new nodes that we've created. Before we do anything with them, we want to window them and make sure that they're corner nodes. Okay. And once they're there, you just click and, and drag the middle one out and you can adjust the handles to get the shape that you want. And there you go. Speech bubble. Very quick. Uh, one thing you might do um, that I've done in, in some cases is I want to create a drop, a drop shadow under these. So what I'll do is uh, hit Control D to duplicate this object. 
and now I've got the duplicate on top I'm going to um, turn off the stroke make the fill black okay and I'll probably first of all I'll offset it so what I'll do is I will uh, while it's selected I'll hit control J to get a dynamic offset handle up here and I'm just going to drag it slightly larger than the original we will blur it a little bit maybe we'll try a blur of one that may be good and we'll just do two here okay we can send that back behind the bubble and we might even uh, drop it down a little bit maybe even reduce the opacity a little bit so then we get a nice drop shadow underneath our speech bubble in case we want to have a little more separation between the speech bubble and what's below it okay so there's one uh, very simple um, next we might do a rectangular speech bubble so we'll grab the rectangle tool draw a rectangle here adjust holding control and grab one of the corner handles here uh, the top right adjust the radius of curvature there so once I have that selected I'll go back up to 100% opacity we'll go white with the fill and on the stroke we'll go black same as we had before we'll just leave it that way and again it's the same method we will um, turn this into a path so it's now no longer a rectangle double click it and we'll pick our spot so we'll say we want a node here node here and a new node somewhere in the middle we'll just even though these are already corner nodes just double check make them make sure they're corner nodes grab the middle one drag it down like that okay so there's another uh, quick and easy speech bubble thought bubbles are much the same we can do an ellipse okay and then just create a duplicate and we'll scale it down okay now what I've done here is I've uh, if you're looking at the top here um, and we have this on the right hand side you can't see it because of the width of my window here but if you expand this Inkscape window out you're going to see uh, different buttons here to push that will do these things they will scale stroke width with your object that's the one I've unchecked okay so normally I think the default is if you scale an object down say by 50% it's uh, it's um, stroke will scale down by 50% as well so here I've turned that off so that each time I create a duplicate and a smaller object the stroke remains constant that's what we want we want the outline of these objects to remain the same width or thickness so there we go there's a simple thought bubble okay um, you can play around with those so there's three very quick and easy speech bubbles you can use for uh, some type of comic work you you might be working on um, now one other thing I want to cover is um, now you putting the text into these objects so uh, it's very simple just click the text tool now it's important don't just you know normally when we create text on a lot of our screencasts we click this button and just click once and start typing away uh, we want to have flowed text we want to have a little more control over the text so what we're going to do is instead of just clicking and typing we're going to drag a window like this and then type so we could say you know testing one two three blah blah now you don't see it here because um, obviously the window was too big here let me see if I can get that there we go yeah, we'll bring up the text tool problem is I have my font size way too big for my objects here so we'll set that as the default try this again select the window there we go testing one two three here is the wonderful text okay now because we did it in a window when we double click it we get this handle here okay and we can adjust kind of the flow of this text for an oval you typically want to have this 
uh, center justified. So in the text and font dialog, once the text is selected, you click center justify and apply. Okay, so now we have it here. Uh, next, we want to change the font, obviously. So we're going to change it to one of these fonts that I've uh, downloaded. Uh, one I like is called letter letter omatic. And then we can either scale up the text like this, make sure it fits, you know, entirely the way we want it with our handle here, and there we're good to go. Okay, so. Um, and we can do that same type of thing. In a rectangle, you don't necessarily have to center justify whatever looks good to you. Okay. Um, now, one other type of bubble we might try to do is more of an action type of uh, bubble. I've tried this a few different ways. The way I find that uh, it's easiest is we'll draw an ellipse. This is only one type, so we'll, we'll just have a look and see if it works. Um, we have an ellipse, and we'll grab the Bezier tool. If you hear a few bangs in the background, it's uh, I'm recording this in the evening of Canada Day. Excuse me while I have a sip of coffee. And um, uh, you'll hear a little bit of fireworks in the background probably. So uh, if you hear a banging, that's what it is. So anyway, we've we've got our, um, our ellipse. We're just using this as a guide, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is just uh, single click a bunch of lines here around not even, but I'm going to use that ellipse as a guide. I don't have to be right on it, but we're going to try something here. You can see I dragged a little bit when I should have just single clicked. But and we'll close that up. So there. Now we can get rid of our ellipse in the center. Okay, so we've got a kind of a bang type of um, shape here. We'll probably increase the stroke style a little bit. Maybe we'll go to two. And now what I'll do is I'll take one of these fonts that I used. We'll like this. And we'll change the font to um, one of these ones I chose. Let's try that same. Where is it? Letter Omatic. Okay. And what I'm going to do is do a little bit different treatment on the text. I'm going to, first of all, um, bring up the fill and stroke dialog box and I'm going to, um, well, actually, before I turn it into a path, what I'll do is I'll bring up the text dialog once more. I'm just going to change this to bold, make it a little thicker. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to turn this into a path. Control Shift C. I'm going to turn off the fill and turn on the stroke. Okay. So now they're hollow letters, and um, Actually, you know what? We'll turn on the fill, but we'll make it white. Okay. Now, I'm going to split up these letters by doing, uh, now that they're a path, I'm going to split them up by doing um, break apart. Okay? Like this. Now, you'll see that we lost a couple of closed shapes. So, one, we send this back. You'll see it's there. This is one shape. The outlines are another shape. Okay. I'm going to group those two letters. Make sure all the letters are a single piece. Probably have to group these two. Okay. And I'm just going to change them a little bit. I'm going to scale them up by varying degrees. Again, I've got that option turned on where the stroke, um, sorry, where the stroke uh, does not get scaled with the object, so it remains constant, and uh, we might change things a little. 
bang is kind of appropriate, I guess, with these fireworks going off. So something like that. Now I can take that, group it, enlarge it a little bit. Uh, I did turn that stroke. Let's see if we can make that stroke a little bit bigger. We'll ungroup it and we'll change the stroke to something heavier and then group it again. So there we go. There's a nice kind of action type of text that you might use. Fairly easy to create, didn't take too long. Um, so that's it. Fairly short screencast. Hopefully uh, you find it useful. I haven't done anything about uh, drawing comics because uh, I'm not very good at it, but uh, there are lots of tutorials out there on how to draw comics and uh, even a few good ones on, on how to um, get those into Inkscape. So um, maybe I'll post a, a link or two uh, in the uh, in the post along with the screencast and you can check those out as well. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching.